Hey gang, what's up? Hope everybody's doing good out there today and welcome back here to another late night in the tackle room. Today guys, we're gonna be giving you a seminar, sort of a tutorial on the science of selecting the right jig size in correlation with your line size. Now I think this is something that does not get talked about enough. It has a huge impact on the performance of your jig, getting the most out of it, getting the most bites, uh, getting the fish in the boat that do bite. And um, this is one of the areas I've spent a lot of time. You know, I've been fishing jigs for 50 years, guys, and it's probably jigs and jerk baits are my two favorite techniques. And um, I've really studied this a lot as far as line size, type of line. So we're gonna go into that in detail. So real quick guys, also, since we're talking about jigs and line, <clears throat> just wanna remind you guys, we'll be talking about the block at Old School Jig. And if you guys are interested in getting some, I'll put the Baitworks link in the description. Um, you can get that uh, block at Old School Jig through that link. And also I'm gonna be talking about <clears throat> Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon line. You can also get that at Baitworks. And if you use that link, it's a good way to help the channel here. So much appreciated. Okay guys, I think that um, a lot of people they, you know, they use different type of line sizes based upon the obvious um, type of cover you're fishing, you know, some variables like that, how deep you're fishing, um, maybe the way to jig a little bit like that. But there's a lot more to it in terms of how you need to select the line and the type of line you need to select. And then we'll just go into detail about all that. So first of all, 90, probably 98% of my jig fishing. And when talking about jigs, talk about whether it be a finesse jig or block it old school jig, football jig, whatever, 98% of the time I'm using the Seaguar Invisex fluorocarbon line here. I've, in my opinion, it's the best jig line that you can use. It's small diameter, super strong, invisible. Um, that's just what I use all the time. Now, 2% of the time, guys, I will use braided line, that Seaguar Smackdown. <clears throat> the only time that I fish braided line on a jig the only time I fish it is in um, thick reeds. Say for example, I'm fishing, you know, down in Florida somewhere where there's a lot of reeds and buggy whips. I will use braided line uh, and a heavy jig in that situation here. Man, we have got a bunch of bugs here in the garage tonight. I got bugs flying all around me right here. So um, the, from the line size standpoint, that's what we're talking about. So let's talk a little, bit, a little bit about the determination of the line size in correlation with the weight of your jig. First of all, guys, it doesn't make any difference if you're using, you know, a heavier jig, um, you know, like the 5 8 ounce size right here, or if you're using a little quarter ounce size here, smaller head. The line size has nothing to do with the jig weight that you're using as far as if you should use heavier or lighter line based upon the jig size. It doesn't have anything to do with it on that, on that element. There's other factors that play into it. So from that standpoint, don't think that just because um, you've got a quarter ounce jig that you need to downsize your line. There's a ton of times, guys, that I use 25 pound test Seaguar fluorocarbon on a quarter ounce jig, a bunch of times out there. And actually some of the situations, guys, I have it, I'll take the quarter ounce jig and um, I'll file the head down to make it an eighth of an ounce or lighter, and I'll still use a 25 pound test line on it. And then sometimes um, I'll use the 5 8 ounce jig and I'm using 12 pound test line. So it doesn't have anything to do with, um, you know, the jig size. I got a dang blood, bug just flew into my eye. Can you believe that? God dang. Okay, I'll be right back guys. I'm gonna try to get this bug out of my eye. Okay, sorry about that. I, I'm out here, it's about midnight tonight and I've got the garage doors open, the lights on, the bugs are all over in here. So anyway, back to what we're saying here, guys, is don't let um, don't let the weight of your jig determine the size of, your, of line that you're using, a lot of different variables. So let's talk a little bit about um, the, the variables that determine line size and how to pick the right line size. For, first of all, one of the things you need to remember, and a lot of people don't realize this about line size, is that different line size, like if you're using 20 pound test line, versus 12 pound test line or 15 pound test line, what it's gonna do, it's going to make the fall rate of your jig and the angle of descent of your jig different. It's like this jig here, say for example, I'm using a 5 8 ounce jig, this jig will fall at a different angle and a different speed with 12 pound test line than it will with 25 pound test line. The heavier line that you use, 
the more pull you're gonna have forward and the slower the fall is gonna be. So there's gonna be a significant difference. If I'm flipping this 5 8 ounce jig with 12 pound test in VizX, it's gonna fall different angle, it's gonna fall at a different rate versus a 25 pound test line. Personally, when I'm pitching and flipping guys, I like the way a jig falls on 25 pound. I like the weight that it falls, I like the, the, the glide that it has. So if I'm fishing a jig, <clears throat> flipping it around cover, doesn't even have to be heavy cover, it can be sparse cover. I'm using 25 pound tests, these are Invisix most of the time. Um, it's invisible, they're not gonna see it, I just like the way it feels with that. And I, I learned this, this was another uh, tip or another trick that my mentor, jig fishing mentor, Terry Thomas taught me. He used to use 30 pound test mono. And that's, I did forever, I did too, I used 30 pound test mono until I started using the fluorocarbon, the 25 pound, but um, don't let that scare you off there. So that's gonna be a determination. The next thing you need to determine is the in correlation with the rate of fall and the angle, you have to determine if that fish, if it makes any difference on the angle and the speed of descent on there, because sometimes it doesn't. If those fish are glued to the bottom and they're not chasing a bait whatsoever or they're not suspended in the water column out there, a lot of times you don't need to take your time to get to the bottom. And normally what happens is that this is the cleaner the water, the more that you can get away with a faster fall and the more you can get away with lighter line on there. So let's say for example, I'm flipping um, docks in a, in, a, in a clear water environment. Say there's some docks that have three and a half or four foot of clarity. I'm not concerned about, you know, how fast that jig falls to the bottom. It's more about getting that jig to the bottom and getting that jig to come through the cover good the way that I want to fish it. So from that standpoint there, that's really a non-issue. The, the times that the jig, the line size and correlation with the jig size and cover uh, play a role for me is in various water clarities combined with various water depths combined with the cover that you're fishing. So let's say, for example, I'll run through some scenarios here because it's not like one shoe fits all. If I'm fishing dirty water um, and I'm fishing water, visit, water depth that's like less than three feet, say, say for example, I'm fishing six inches of water visibility, six to eight inches, which is really the visibility I love for pitching and flipping jigs. And um, the water temperature is anything like over, say, 70 degrees. I'm using a heavier jig with heavy line on there because um, in that situation there, I'm looking for that reaction strike. Even though that water's a little bit dirty, I mean, they still will react to that in that shallow water. So I'll be using like 25 pound test line in a situation like that. Now, let's say for example, that um, that water temperature is colder and the water's still dirty. If that water temperature is colder and it's a little bit dirty, um, then I'm going to be going to a lighter jig and I'm going to be going to a little bit lighter line. I may downsize to like 17 to 20 pound test in VizX if I go to like a 3 8 ounce model, something like that. And the, the purpose behind that is you want a little bit slower fall and sometimes you get a little bit better action in that colder water out of the little bit lighter line. Now this is just personal preference with that. But very rarely, if I'm fishing that type of water clarity, will I go below 17 pound test line, even if I'm using a quarter ounce jig. Now, if I've got the next step up for there, say for example, if I'm fishing water visibility that's say two to three foot of clarity, a lot of the line size and the jig weight, again, is gonna be dependent upon cover. And when you're talking about jig fishing cover, and when I'm talking about jig fishing, I'm talking primarily in this situation about finesse jigs and pitching and flipping jigs, not as much, not so much football head jigs. Because most of the time when I'm football head jig fishing guys, I'm using 15 to 17 pound test in VizX, any situation, because I'm usually dragging it off of points or stuff like that. So that's not that big of a factor. And on top of that, the football, football head jig, the rate of fall is irrelevant because you're dragging that jig across the bottom. You're not even hopping it. So that's not, doesn't really fit in the same genre. So we're talking about, you know, the finesse jig and the flipping jig. So anyway, if I get two to three foot of clarity with that, 
again, the determination is based upon uh, water visibility, uh, the water temperature, and the cover that I'm fishing. And if that water temperature is sort of in that mid-range, say for example, it's in that 55 to 70 degree range, which we have a lot in the spring and the fall, this is a perfect situation for a 3 8 ounce jig. There's something about when, when you have that situation, when you have that water visibility and um, water temperature and cover, 3 8 ounce jig works really good. And I usually pair it up with like 17 pound test and visics under those situations. Unless, the, unless you, you're fishing really heavy cover. If I'm fishing maybe like some heavier milfoil or hydrilla or something like that, or if there's some clear water bushes, maybe I may upgrade to like 20 pound test, but 17 is a, is a good situation with that. And if the water is cleaner than that, if the water is uh, over four foot of visibility, um, in that situation there, um, I am not concerned about the rate of fall. I want that jig to the bottom as quick as it can get. And the line test is determined by the cover. Now, sometimes like here in the Ozarks, we'll have a clear water environment. I'll be flipping bushes in the water visibility is eight or 10, 10 foot of clarity. And I'll be flipping bushes, you know, in that clarity. And I want that jig on the bottom. And it's the same if I'm fishing sparse, if I'm fishing a dock piling or or stump or whatever like that. In a clear water situation, I want that bait to get down there. So that is when I'm using a little bit heavier jig with a little bit lighter line to get it down there with that. The main thing that you wanna do is you want to be able to use the heaviest line that you can get away with that doesn't take away from the strikes because a jig is a power fishing deal. Even with the finesse jig, it's a sort of a power fishing thing. But there's a fine line between that. There's a fine line between um, say using 12 or 15 pound test line on a jig and 25 pound test line on a jig. It feels different. It's like when you pitch that jig out there on 25, there's a feel to it that is, um, it, it's just, it's a little bit more solid, a little bit more heavy. And if you're flipping it out there on 12 or 15 pound test line, not only that it, that it has a, a, bit, a, a different feel, you have a little bit more sensitivity, but you also have more stretch. The lighter line that you use, the more that it's going to stretch on a jig. So remember that too, as far as on your hook sets with it. But the main thing, guys, is um, when you're fishing a full-size jig or a finesse jig, um, let the cover, the water clarity, um, the water depth, all that, all that type of stuff influence the line size that you're using because it has a big role in it. And like I said, another thing I would highly recommend, guys, is do not use braided line on your jigs unless you're fishing extremely heavy cover like reeds or matted grass. Now, I, I, you know, you see Greg Hackney doing that a lot. He fishes braid a lot. I'm not gonna argue with Greg because he's one of the top flippers in the world that works for him. But in my personal experience, I don't have any problem with fluorocarbon line. It just works really, really good with that. And another thing that will really help you out as far as uh, you know using fluorocarbon line on a jig is you have to set the hook correctly with that and i can tell you because i've lost a ton of fish do not slack set the hook in other words if you get a bite out there you know don't reel down you know set that hook on a slack line it just you will lose more fish than not like that i've caught thousands and thousands or thousands of bass on a jig and any time that I do that, any time that I try to set the hook on a slack line, my percentage of lost fish shoots way through the roof. The best way to, to, to get a bite, the best way to catch the fish on a jig that hits it with fluorocarbon line or braided line is when you pitch in there and you feel that strike, reel down until that line is tight and then just pull back on it and start reeling hard and do not let up. You want, I don't care if that fish is, is eight inches long or eight pounds. When you start reeling on that fish and you start pulling into it, you keep that coming to you fast. Not like as fast as you can reel, but you reel it at a pretty fast pace until that fish decides which direction it's gonna move. So say for example, you pitch out there and you get that strike and you reel down and you pull it into it like that and you're reeling with it and that fish is coming to the boat keep reeling until that fish comes past you. Say for example, you're reeling and here comes that fish 
and he runs past you like that, don't ever turn that fish around. You, what you want to do is you follow the fish around the boat. I don't care where it goes. You want to go the same direction all the time with that fish. Don't ever try to reverse directions with a jig fish because you'll pop that jig out of that fish's mouth when you try to turn it around. I, believe me, I have learned the hard way and it took me way too long to learn that. So um, keep them coming in the same direction. Just wear them out with that and you'll do a lot better with it. With it. But anyway, guys, like I said, stick with fluorocarbon. You can't go wrong with it. Fluorocarbon is the best way to fish a jig. And if you have if you have a rather as far as you can't really decide, like I can't say, for example, you're, you know, flipping docks with a jig and you say, man, I can't decide if I need, need to use 12 pound or 17, always go to a little bit heavier because it's not gonna, it's not gonna affect the action of the jig in a way that it does like a crankbait or a jerk bait or something like that. It's gonna affect the rate of fall and it's gonna affect the angle of the fall but it's not gonna it's not gonna take away the action of the, that jig, so you can get away with it from that standpoint. So, anyway, guys, just a few quick tips. I hope that helps out. We'll talk later.